Hello everyone, and welcome back to another movie review. It has been a long time since I made one. Last one was Back to the Future, my first one here at college. I thought I was going to be making more reviews. I underestimated how busy I would become with schoolwork and getting to know new friends and a new town and, and all of that craziness. Um, and I did end up watching a lot of movies. A lot of them were uh, three and a half to four stars. You know, definitely a lot of good movies, but nothing I really felt driven to review. Until I hit... Climax, which is what I'm reviewing today. Now, the reason I'm so interested in reviewing this movie is because among the people who recommended it to me or were discussing it um, on the Discord server that I'm on, it's very contented. They either really, really love it or really, really dislike it, and I'm always excited to watch movies like that and sort of see where I fall on the spectrum. And this was a case where I ended up falling on one of the extremes, and I'm very excited to discuss my thoughts on it. So Climax is a film by the French filmmaker Gaspar Noé, uh, I've never seen any of his movies before, I know he's known for quite a few kind of crazy things, and this definitely sort of falls in line with that, but um, I'll get around to watching his other films eventually, but just want to let you know that this is my first experience with his films, so if uh, it sort of bounces off of his past work, I am not personally able to make that connection. Climax follows the story of a group of French dancers who are all working under one choreographer, and it essentially just follows one night. Um, where they're all working together and end up after they're practicing their dance, having a party, having a good time, and they discover that someone has spiked the punch that they've been all been drinking, and they all start falling down into this ridiculous drug-fueled rampage of everyone just sort of losing their mind. Now, with that simple premise and the idea of everything being sort of drug-fueled, I didn't think I would enjoy it, and especially because someone who knows my film taste very well thought that there was no way in hell I would enjoy any of it. Um, but I surprisingly got around to watching it and enjoyed a lot of it. Personally, I'm not really someone who enjoys movies based around drug trips, you know, where they try to make your brain feel like you're experiencing the trip that the characters are going through. Um, some examples being Fearing and Loathing in Las Vegas, uh, Train Spotting. Those movies didn't really click for me, and while I respect them as the films that they are, they really didn't work for me, so I end up giving them lower scores. But surprisingly, Climax rectified those with a few interesting points that I'll get into soon. So, starting off with the biggest and most interesting thing about this film, and the thing I personally enjoyed the most, was the structure of the film. So the film starts off with a series of interviews with each of the many characters that you're going to be following throughout the movie. I think there's almost 30 people. It's a pretty crazy cast, and at the beginning you're a little overwhelmed with all these people you're getting introduced to. They each have a name, which ends up not being as important since only some of the characters are really the center of the story. But um, after the interviews, it cuts to one of the most memorable scenes in the movie, the main choreographed dance sequence with amazing camera work, all one shot, and all of the actors that you were introduced to in the interviews working together to make this insane mind-bending, lots of arms wiggling and people bouncing off of each other dance that is one of the most impressively choreographed things I've ever seen in a movie. So after you get all the characters established as a cohesive group through that dance, it shifts to a sequence that is each of the characters sort of pairing off into their own little friendships and having small snippets of conversation, bouncing around each group, sort of getting their perspectives, what their motivations are, what how their relationships ha have been with other characters, and it really lets you connect to each character and sort of think, oh, this is where they're going to be going for the rest of the film. Following that, there is a second dance sequence that is entirely shot from a bird's eye view, looking down upon a circle of them with one person dancing in the middle, and you sort of get to see how each dancer's personality shows through their moves, and as they sort of enter the circle, do what they're doing and leave and let someone else come in. So after all this setup, from the introductions, to the group dynamic, to the individual conversations to the personality field dances you lead into the second half of the movie which is where the real meat is the second half is one long shot where it follows each character as they experience this trip into insanity as they realize that their punch has been spiked and they're trying to figure out who it is they each have different reactions depending on how much they drank their motivations set up and the conversations are sort of played off in subtle ways where you see them try to fulfill their desires with other characters and learn about what is going on in each room the camera because it doesn't cut and continuously follow someone you can get a very good uh, mental map of where all the rooms are and how each character is in relation to each other and really this 
single shot style is why this movie personally succeeds so well into this falling into madness style that so many movies I've watched recently have tried to accomplish. Recently I've watched Shutter Island, House, Suspiria, Joker, The Lighthouse, all of these movies that follow the downward spiral of one character into their personal insanity, but none of them really ever felt like they were succeeding to that. They were always felt a little too forced in the um, script where you're just trying to follow the character rather than um, learn what's going on in their mind. And it's this aspect of the movie that made me really realize that I was actually enjoying it the entire time. The second most engaging and interesting aspect of the film is how the camera work and lighting play together um, to create a really surreal experience. Each room sort of has its own uh, atmosphere through the lighting and how the camera travels through it. You get bright uh, green lights in one hallway, there's a sort of ghastly blue light coming from a corner in one room, and then the main dance floor is sort of bathed in this red light from multiple directions, casting shadows and making some people sort of seem like silhouettes in the background. And that combined with the fact that the camera is always transitioning without cutting from color to color, going through darkness, sometimes shutting off into a black screen for multiple seconds at a time, I think almost up to 10 seconds at one point, which was a really interesting choice. It really makes it all feel like it's one big thing, but you're really just transitioning through these layers of madness and into each character's sort of personal hell as they sort of experience what's going on around them. And as I said, it's a very big cast. Each character has their own unique personality and how they interact with others, which, as I said, was set up in the small conversation section. But each of these moments and each of these characters is so incredibly well acted through a combination of of their movements and a lot of improvised dialogue and interaction that really makes it feel natural in a way that you never really get in most movies because they're always um, cutting into different places and times which does not happen in this movie because it's almost entirely in real time. Alright, so really the only negative thing I have against this movie is during the conversation section that I continuously keep referencing, the editing style is very off-putting in my opinion. The cuts are just slightly too long, they last in black for a little bit longer than you're used to, and it really ends up feeling choppy and a little bit off-putting that me and my roommate who was next to me watching this kind of kept looking at each other and wondering why that choice was made because it would have been a much more consistent and fluid experience if they really had just cut normally from one area to the other. But even though that's a negative point to me, because the content of the conversations was so engaging as I've said multiple times, I ended up wondering throughout the movie, except for that, wondering when I was going to start disliking the movie. I had been told many times before that this was not my type of movie, and I was just waiting for the moment for something to happen or the scene to change where I ended up feeling off-put in a bad way or experiencing the movie in a negative light, but that moment never came. And because of that, I honestly enjoyed almost every second of this movie. I was engaged in a way that I don't really feel with most movies, and Everything about it sort of just came together in a very positive way for me. So saying that, I have Climax at 4.5 out of 5 stars. I really enjoy this movie. I highly recommend it to anyone who wants to see something unique. A lot of interesting things in this movie that I never thought I would see in film or haven't before because I just haven't experienced this filmmaking style. But in the end, it is actually one of the better movies I've seen this year, and I personally really enjoyed it. So I hope you enjoyed my review. I hope I have sort of avoided big moments enough where you will want to be intrigued enough to see it yourself. It is definitely something I recommend watching, and I really hope you enjoyed my review. So thank you so much for watching, guys, and I will hopefully see you in another review sometime relatively soon. Bye.